Welcome once again to the Wise Heart Family Singers Chapel Hour. I trust that today the, the Lord will bless you in a very special way. Not even today, but just throughout uh, this week and even the rest of your life. But you will find the Lord very special in a lot of ways as you uh, do your best to live for him. You know, there are probably a lot of the conveniences that we have today that we would never have if the person that invented them had quit. I think it was uh, Thomas Edison. I'm not sure, but I think it was him. I don't know how many times he tried uh, before he finally got uh, our incandescent light bulb. And there have been other inventors that have worked and worked and worked and worked, and maybe uh, when they were just about ready to quit, all of a sudden something clicked. So today I want to encourage you, don't quit. If you're fighting battles and you get a little discouraged sometimes, don't quit because the Holy Spirit is there to help you, and if you just rely on Him, He'll bring you through victoriously. shows the power of God there's glory all around and those who see must stand in awe for miracles abound I cannot doubt the work of God it's plain for all to see the miracles that he has wrought should lead to Calvary. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Miraculous, the change in one redeemed through Calvary. I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn sod. I believe in miracles, for I believe in God.
And everybody that lives around us, they say tear that old lighthouse down. The big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. What's the use of them standing round? But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when John as a generation of impatient people. You may have heard me say it before, but there are actually some people that get impatient if they miss one of those sections in one of these revolving doors. You know, when we want to get things done, we want to get them done fast. When we cook our meals, we want to get cooked fast. When we get ready to travel, we want to travel fast. When we get on a computer, we want that computer to work fast. And we want to solve all the world's problems fast. Patience is practically an unheard of virtue in the world today. When we realize we need patience, uh, the spirit of the age actually creeps into our prayer life. And we, we pray, Lord, please give me patience. Give it to me right now. But... Uh, as you have found out, it doesn't always work that way. In Luke chapter 21, verse 9, Jesus said, In your patience possess ye your souls. Yet in our hurry, scurry day, we seem to have lost the ability to really wait upon God. In Isaiah chapter 40, the last verse of that chapter, says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint because they learn to wait upon the Lord. In the fifth chapter of the book of James, verses 10 and 11, we read, For examples of patience in suffering, look at the Lord's prophets. We know how happy they are now because they stayed true to him even though they suffered greatly. Job is an example of a man who continued to trust the Lord in sorrow, and from his experience we can see how the Lord's plan finally ended in good, for he is full of tenderness and mercy. All James is saying is if you stay true to God, he'll stay true to you. So what can we learn from Job's experience? Well, first of all, let's look at prosperous Job. Sometimes it's easy to forget God when everything's going well. But Job did not. In the first chapter, verses 1 and 5, we find that Job was perfect and upright. He feared God. He went to church. He made sacrifices for his children. And uh, he seemed to just be a, a, a picture of someone who had it all together. But then, you remember, there was a kind of a heavenly summit meeting when Satan came before God, and he said, uh, God said, well, have you seen my servant Job? How, what a wonderful, upright man he is. Satan said, yeah, but 
uh, he's just uh, that way because you bless him. You put a hedge around him. You take that hedge down and you watch how he'll turn against you. Well, God gave him permission, and I emphasize this. God gave him permission. He didn't do anything to Job without God's permission. And so in just a, just a few short hours, Job lost his, his livestock. He lost his servants. He lost... Uh, he lost everything he had. And later on, he lost his family. And his wife misunderstood him and said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? And then as a final uh, blow, he lost his health. And we find him on the garbage, at the garbage dump, scraping the sores with little pieces of pottery. And he, even after that, when his friends came to actually comfort him, they ended up uh, being more harm than good. And his friends even misunderstood him because they thought Job was in that condition because he had done something wrong. So you'll notice that as you go through that, how Job lost everything. Then next, uh, after prosperous Job, we have persecuted Job, and then we have persevering Job. Job suffered because of what the devil did to him. He suffered because of what his wife did to him. She misunderstood. He suffered, suffered because uh, the misunderstandings of his friends. And he may even realize that maybe in some way God was responsible for all that's going on. But, but even then he did not blame God in any way for on later in chapter 13, verse 15, he says, Though God slay me, yet will I trust him. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in this place? You've been maybe deserted and alone. Maybe you were hurting inside or outside. Maybe you felt forsaken by people or misunderstood by your loved ones. Maybe circumstances were hemming you in and, and you were just feeling pressed down and you just kind of had the feeling, nobody cares for me. No one even tries to help me. Well, how do you feel about God at times like this? Do you feel like quitting? Do you say in your heart, oh, it's just no use? Do you feel like just giving it all up? Well, the good news is this. Jesus sat where Job sat. He left everything. He emptied himself and became flesh and suffered as, as a human being all that pain and agony of Calvary. And Jesus sat where you're sitting. The Bible says he was in all points tempted like as we are. Jesus sat where you're sitting. He knows how you feel when you're going through certain things, and he knows how to help you. So the Holy Spirit can make him real to you right now as that. The Bible says he is our pre very present help in time of need. And right now, if you trust him, the Holy Spirit can be that very present help for you in your time of need. Jesus, as I said, was tempted in all points, like as we are. But still, the Bible says, he is our merciful and faithful high priest. Now, the devil may accuse you. Circumstances may press you down. Men may abandon you. There's a little story in the Old Testament when David was uh, fleeing from, his, uh, from Saul, and he even went over to kind of join in with one of his enemies. And he lived there for a while. And then when they were going out against Israel, David said, well, I'll go out with you. And the generals of the army said, don't let David go because he gets out there and he'll turn his back on us and start fighting for Israel. So the king set David home and David took his men and they got just about home. They were, I like to picture it as them coming up on a, a high rise and they're looking towards where their home is and all they can see is smoke rising up where their city is. 
and uh, they, they knew that something terrible had happened. The Bible says even David's men were thinking about stoning him. David didn't have any recourse. He didn't know where to go. But the Bible says at that moment, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's what you and I have to do a lot of times when we're going through a lot of these things and it doesn't seem like we've got any help from anywhere. We have to encourage ourselves in the Lord because he's the one that is there with us at all times. And we learn what the psalmist David learned in Psalm 27, 10. David said, when my father and mother forsake me, when I've lost everything, even the closest friends, even my father and mother, then the Lord will lift me up. And at one point, David says he, that he has me engraved on the palm of his hand. And I like to think when I read that scripture, oh, every time the Lord lifts his hand up, he sees me. He sees my name. He knows what I'm going through. So Job lost everything. He lost everything but his faith in God. And that faith in God was what saw him through. And that faith in God was what brought him through victorious. So has the devil lied to you? Is he telling you just give it all up? Are you ready to give up? Well, don't. Don't quit. Because victory may just be right around the corner. And it could come to you right now as you are looking at this a program on on your iPhone or wherever you're seeing it as you're looking at this if you will look to the Lord victory can be right around the corner all you have to do if you're a sinner is lift up your hands and say Lord I'm a sinner I need to be saved I repent of my sins I pray that you'll just forgive me cleanse me from all this unrighteousness and uh, Help me to begin to walk with you for the rest of my life. And if you're a Christian, maybe you're at that place, you just were about to quit. You are about to throw in the towel. But let me encourage you today, don't quit. Don't quit. Victory is here now if you'll accept it. Shall we pray? Father, right now, I know there may be those looking at this program right now that that maybe they were just about ready to give it up. Maybe they were just about ready to quit. Oh, Father, right now, just instill in their soul that, that note of victory. Lord, oh, I can make it. I can make it. I've got God on my side. And with God on my side, it's a majority. And I can make it through. So I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to trust you, Lord, until the victory is won. And if you're a sinner, oh, I pray that right now you'll cry out to the Lord. Ask him to save you and then serve him for the rest of your life. Father, we just pray you'll make this message real to those that are listening. And Lord, they'll decide they're not going to quit, but they're going to go on to victory. We pray and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for The Chapel Hour with Rev. Russell Weishart and the Weishart Family Singers. For previous programs, please go to YouTube and search for The Weishart Family Singers Channel. If you're a minister, teacher, or student of the Bible and would like to access Rev. Weishart's messages, outlines, and sermon notes, please go to thechapelhour.blogspot.com. And of course, one of the best ways to stay in touch with us is on the Weishart Family Singers Facebook page. We want to thank everyone for finding us, for your encouragement, for subscribing to our channel, and for hitting that little like button. We look forward to seeing you next week on The Chapel Hour.